this was halftime, baby races. San Diego State's on top 34-27. We would like to say congratulations to Michael Milstein and his lovely wife, Anna. They've had their first child, Judah, who was born yesterday. Baby's fine, mom is fine. And Milstein, if you're out there, Congratulations. Rich Waltz along with Steve Lapis, A.J. Ross here as well. This is the script that Brian Dutcher wanted for San Diego State, a slugfest that's going to end up in the 50s or 60s. It's typical. I've been watching them for years do this they game in and game out. And this year they're back to their old ways like they did under Steve Fisher. Now Brian Dutcher's got him doing it. The thing for Greg Smith is he's got to figure out a way to score. The bottom line is if you don't score in a half court against San Diego State, because they're not going to beat themselves, they're not going to turn it over, you got to figure out a way to score in the half court and that's the problem right now yeah easier said than done because when you look at the Aztecs it's everybody who plays defense well there's no doubt they play great team defense and their philosophy is five guys have to guard the ball and they do that as well as anybody in the nation they only give up 56 points a game but the Kata was tremendous the kid has hardly played this year because of that knee and he has seven points ten rebounds a block he is a guy you got to get. If, to have a guy like him in the half court, throw him the ball because he's also a very good passer. And it's significant that San Diego State is winning the war in the paint and as far as rebounding. Let's check in with A.J. Ross. A.J.? Here, Rich. Uh, Utah State coach Craig Smith definitely took a lot of time speaking with his team at the half. Now, Namish Kata definitely got to a great start, but he says he's feeling good and he doesn't anticipate any limitations with his minutes in the second half. But he does want to get this offense going. They need to swing the ball more, get more ball reversals, and defensively, they need to close out better. All right, thank you, AJ. And I think one thing that is hurting them a little bit now is when you have Justin Bean and Caden at the same time, he really clogs up the lane because Bean's an inside player. He's only made one three all year. Great play out of the time. Kata right away. That was coming right out of the locker room. Screen up for Kata to the block layup. Good ball by Craig Smith. Malachi Flynn with the ball, playing with three fouls. KJ Fagan against Merrill. Driving, reversing, hooking, and it bounces out. Porter there. Long three from Merrill. Boy, can they get the player of the year last year going. Two of seven is Merrill Flynn. Kada with the block and the foul. Take a look at the great execution. It's a nice up screen by Sam Merrill. You're going to see right here. He sets that up screen and Kada goes right to the box and gets a layup. That's good execution on that screen on Yanni Wetzel. Flynn with his eight points. Stretches the lead back to seven. Good job by Fagan defensively on Merrill. Bean misses a putback and gets it up and in. He's such a quick jumper. That's why he's such a good offensive rebounder. He got his own miss there. Gets off the floor very quickly. Biggest lead was 11. Crowd sensing that Utah State has a little momentum. Fagan's three. That will end your momentum quickly. Matt Mitchell, good shooters feel a shot before they even catch the ball. You knew he was going to shoot that by the way he used. He came in right left and was ready to shoot it. Mitchell now with 10 points. Merrill, nice find, Porter, Abel Porter. Oh, that was a tough shot, too, that Porter made. All of a sudden, San Diego State not making the stops they were making in the first half. Flynn's doubled, shackle open, three. No, Mitchell. Wetzel's fouled, and that's Kata. 
Yeah, that's a good call, I think. He went over his back. Second personal. Instead of moving his feet that time to try to get around Wetzel, he tried to steal that ball over his back. Not a good, not a good play defensively. Kata has played 18 minutes of this game already. Remember, he's missed three straight games and played just 72 minutes in four games coming in. Fagan finds Flynn. Driving, oh, stopping, smart. shackle, got the three. What a great play by Malachi Flynn. He sensed, I can get a charge here. Did you see how he pulled up? Two foot jump stop. Said, oh, I'm stopping right here. I'm not getting a charge. Kicked it out to Shako. Scores. Kata calling for it. They haven't doubled him at all this game. That's an offensive foul. That's three. And that's three quick ones. Greg Smith got to go to his bench. I mean, that's an easy play. I mean, he's overplaying you that way. You got to go back the other way. He's obviously taking away your right shoulder. Nine points, ten rebounds as well on the bench now. Flynn driving, rising, scoring. This Malachi Flynn. I tell you, this guy is so under control. Everything is efficient. And just like that, that Mitchell three ended the Utah State run, and suddenly it's an 11 point lead. Merrill misses the three. Flynn has the rebound. They are rushing him on everything. They have to pray that Malachi Flynn gets another foul. Wetzel, bad pass. Yeah, that's a bad pass. Bean. Justin Bean into the game is Trevin Dorius. Missed the shot, lost the ball, and Mitchell's got it for San Diego State. That could have been a flop warning on that one. Well, that warning can come yeah, he after did. a whistle. He signaled the flop. He, he signaled the flop, I believe. Yeah, he, yep, he's going to the, he's, I think he's going to tell the table. I mean, that is a flop. And for oh, a, yes, and Tony Padilla, that's the flop warning. And for a warning, you don't have to stop the game. You wait till that last, uh, to the next whistle, and then report it to the table. The next one is a class one technical foul. And that's a point of emphasis in college basketball this year. Yeah, next one will be a, they'll shoot if it happens again. So the warning's given. Craig Smith and the Aggies were flat at UNLV. And they lost 70 to 53. They haven't been real sharp tonight. And a lot of it is because Sam Merrill can't get in this game. Flynn against Merrill. Driving. Merrill with a block. And a foul. Oh, did they call the foul? That is Merrill's foul. Yes, absolutely. Well, that was a foul right there. He's got two hands on him. I mean, that's a foul. I mean, I hate to say it, but Sam Merrill fouled him twice before they called the foul. This is the biggest lead. There's a, a variety of uh, celebrities in the shooting background of Malachi Flynn. There's a giant Nemesh Keita there. You recognize it? There's Mr. Bean. <laughs> Aquaman. So Flynn hits both free throws. He'll come out of the game. I think that's a good. I think that's a good move by Brian Dutcher with those three fouls. Got a little bit of a cushion. Get him out for a couple of minutes. Buy some time. 
You see the run, a 7-0 run in a minute and 30-second time. Seiko fouling Merrill off the ball. He's getting emotional out there, but right now, San Diego State has their biggest lead of the night. Four minutes in, second half, San Diego State by 13. Steve Lapis with some AT&T fast analysis. Well, you're going to see why dribble penetration is the worst thing that a defense can allow you to do. And in this case, Malachi Flynn gets into the lane. Look where everybody is. Everybody ends up in the lane. So in that case, obviously, the guy outside is wide open. That's why dribble penetration is bad. Everybody gets sucked into the lane. Now you kick it out to good three-point shooters, and they're wide open. You must contain the ball off the dribble. I've asked you this already once. I'll ask you again. How do you get Merrill going? You got to scream for him. You got to screen, and you got to screen, and you got to screen bodies, and you got to reverse the ball. That's or run some set plays. Remember what Craig Smith told us? He didn't run enough set plays. He felt the other day against UNLV. Run some set plays. For him. Porter. And that's Bean with the rebound. And San Diego State has to be careful because they've done a really good job against one of the best rebounding teams in the country in this game. Can't start giving up offensive rebounds. They've given up two that have scored in this half. Fagan probing. Mitchell now strong to the basket. Missed. Got the rebound. Bean takes it away. Stolen. This is Fagan. Well, that was really quick. He got into that passing lane so quick, Fagan. Porter on the baseline. It's a good place to trap. Seiko guarding Merrill, who misses falling away. Brito to Merrill. Good ball movement. And a payoff. Foul before the shot. You take a look at Fagan getting into a passing lane. That is really quick and great anticipation. And he, he wasn't sure if he was going to the dunk it or lay it in the basket. When in doubt, lay it in the basket. Two leading scores for Utah State on the season. Sam Merrill at 17, Justin Bean at 14. Merrill's got seven, Bean has six. And Merrill has not looked, except for that first shot in the game, he hasn't really been close. He's 0 of 5 from 3, and he nice through for a layup. That time they got a good ball reversal, which moved the San Diego State defense around a little bit, and they were able to get something. Flynn is back in with three fouls. Mitchell's had a nice night tonight. Ten points. They get 12. This kid's a different player this year. And that's one of the things he wanted in the offseason. He wanted to drop 20, 25 pounds. He wanted to be a different player. Bean is open. Oh, that didn't look good. Mitchell runs it down. He only takes seven threes all year. And he's hit just one of them. And they're buying a lot of minutes here, San Diego State, with Malachi Flynn on the bench. Well, the guy with oh, the he's ball. In now. The guy with the ball had a terrific first half. Terrific. Terrific. Pulliam. Seven points and five assists. Mitchell Shackle. Oh, quick release. Jordan Shackle with eight now for San Diego State. And the lead keeps growing. For number 13, the Aztecs on the road and on top. Matt Mitchell getting a lot done. The pass and a three. San Diego State up 16. Right, your Utah State could use a superhero or two. They need Sam Merrill and Justin Bean to get going. Number 13, San Diego State on top. Last remaining undefeated teams, previous three seasons. And their NCAA tournament results, Gonzaga three years ago, Arizona State 
lost in the first four. And of course, Virginia with a couple of miracle wins in the final four. Well, obviously it bodes well. I mean, the last time San Diego State was 20-0 in 2010-11, they had a guy named Kawhi Leonard, and they went to the Sweet 16. So, obviously, this is a really good team. And, you know, I've seen them on tape a lot, but when you see them live, you realize they're much more physical than you think. Um, they're, they have good overall size. And they're just really hard to score on. And they keep this crowd quiet. They're on the road in a tough place, and you wouldn't even know it. And they're playing without their starting big, Nathan Mensa. And look how they guard. Everybody's packed into the lane. You just can't get any penetration. Merrill finds Bean going to the bucket. Couldn't get it to Keita. And luckily, Utah State keeps the ball. Biggest lead here. 16 but a lot of time left here in Logan I'm thinking Utah State needs to go small and get four shooters on the floor with Kata that'll open things up a little bit because this this San Diego State team is just packed especially on B they're not even guarding him out on the perimeter at all they don't even care where he stands Brito hits a three Diogo Brito And that's their first from distance in the second half. Wetzel lost it, kept alive by Merrill. It stays with the Aztecs. When Kata touches the ball, good things happen. That is a really good pass. I think when you have a big man, seven-footer, who can pass like this kid, I think you got to just play through him. They don't really have a penetrating point guard. Abel Porter's a good player, but he's not a penetrating point guard. Play through the big guy. Pulliam. Shackle. And the shot clock expires. You're down 13 if you're Utah State, but you're down 13 to San Diego State. That's different, isn't it? You know what? You can't get crazy, though. Yeah, you're right. It is definitely, but you still have to play two by two. You can't, you're not going to get it all back at once. you got to grind it out because that's what they do to you. you got to beat them at their game. Look at Seiko chasing Merrill everywhere. Brito kicks. Merrill shoots. Got it! See, that time Seiko left Merrill to help. They hadn't been doing that the whole game. This crowd has been waiting to let loose. Wetzel spinning, lost it. Brito down the lane, it's a charge. That's a good call. Oh, they had the numbers, too. He came too far. He should have stopped at the foul line. He had a three-on-two going. He went too far. Brito here leading that fast break. Right here, he should stop. Goes a little too far. And the Aggies are down 10, but they're close. College basketball, and especially the state of Utah, lost a legend on December 29th. Liddell Anderson passed at 90. He played here at Utah State, coached here, took him to an Elite Eight where he was beaten by John Wooden's Bruins back in 1970 and finished his career as an athletic director. Let's check in with A.J. Ross. A.J.? Rich, there's an empty seat in the front row of the Aggie student section dedicated to a special super fan. Derek Earl wasn't just a familiar face in the front row. He embodied the very spirit of the fan base. And just 35 years old, his sudden passing from heart complications just before Christmas has touched the hearts of many in this Logan community. The Aggies dedicated their last home win over Eastern Oregon to Earl, and they hope to keep his memory honored. Continue. Uh, thank you, AJ. This is such a uh, great home court atmosphere. This place holds a little over 10,000, and it feels like all the seats are right on top of the floor. And, of course, San Diego State has such a, a great home court as well. Down at Viejas. Ten-point game. 
two-minute drought for the Aztecs. And a 6-0 run for Utah State. Flynn, pick, roll. Wetzel misses the layup. That could have been offensive interference. 11 rebounds now for Keita. Merrill driving. Merrill gets to the line. Well, let's take a look at this play here. Oh, yeah, that basket should have been good. That is absolutely interference. Ball over the cylinder. You can't grab the net such that it shakes the standard. And I think there's a good chance that's why that ball didn't go in. I give the other thing that Utah State needs to do offensively is what they just did there. Semi-transition. Even if you can't get full transition, try to attack early because maybe San Diego State won't be as set up as they are if you start to play slow. A lot of coaches track that now. Can you get offense in the first 10 seconds of a shot clock? Yeah, you definitely can. I mean, that's what Merrill did just there. Fagan. This is Flynn rising and oh. burying a three. They love that dribble handoff from Yanni Wessel to Malachi Flynn. And that time Utah State went under it, and Flynn will make you pay. 43% for three. Yeah, 16 for Flynn now. Big screen by Merrill. Porter's foul. They've been running this all game. Yanni Wessel with the dribble handoff. Nice screen by Matt Mitchell on Abel Porter on top of it. That was really good execution there. Abel Porter was a walk-on, just like Justin Bean. And last year earned a scholarship. They gave him a scholarship right before the New Mexico game in Albuquerque. And all he did was hit the, the game-winning three. And they took off once he got into the starting lineup. They won. 17 of 19, and that includes the NCAA loss. Yeah, I mean, definitely made a big difference with this. I mean, how about a walk-on? They have two walk-ons that are starters. But I, what I was going to say, Rich, is I like the team that Utah State has in the game now. They've got four guys that can make a three while they're bringing Bean back in. So now they went against what I just said. So they're back to playing with a four and a five men. Neither one is a three-point threat. And I think that creates problems with your spacing. Bean, six points, four rebounds. He's averaging 14 and 11 and a half. Here's the dribble handoff again. Mitchell, shot blocks. Keita. Porter through and he's fouled. This was a big time block. He goes to the other side thinking he's going to have the rim to protect, but not enough. Too long. The Miyash Keita is just so long that you, you can't even use the rim to protect you from getting the shot. Tomorrow night, 8 Eastern, back with a brand new PBR season in the world's most famous arena. Second night of the Monster Energy Bucking Battle at Madison Square Garden here on CBS Sports Do it. Network. Oh, no. Utah State, 9 of 16 from the free throw line. They are usually better than that. Flynn, Fagan, great catch by Wetzel. Not a great pass, though. Shot clock's down to two. Fagan beats the clock, missed the shot. Wetzel, Wetzel has really struggled in the low post when they've thrown him the ball. Kata's not an easy guy to play against. Merrill steps back, missed it. I like the dribble handoffs. I like the pick and rolls. I don't like throwing it in to Wetzel in the low post. He's more comfortable away from the bucket. Well, especially with that guy guarding. Yeah. <laughs> Flynn starting. Backdoor Fagan. The teardrop won't go. 13 rebounds for Keita. Now is a good time to go into Keita. 
He's a little tired, though, he looks. Really walking up the floor, laboring a little bit. But they got subs at the table. I'm sure one of them's for him. He's standing upright. Keita, He'll catch. do that, though. The lead was 16, down to seven. San Diego State leading by seven. They've run this play successfully, Utah State has. Watch Dan Merrill in the left corner. He's gonna set an up screen right here, right there. But look what happens. Wetzel, instead of going under it, he goes over the top and leaves too much space. And that's why Nami Ishkeda is all by himself. You can't have that much space when that guy's screen. You gotta get to his body so he can't get down there that low. Not good defense by Wetzel. Because it wasn't a great screen. Way too easy. First double double this year, 11th in his career. I mean, they've been playing without this kid all season. He's their best player. That's, I mean, Sam Merrill's a good player, don't get me wrong, but this guy's the best player. He's a game changer. And really, for the first time, you feel the crowd now. You feel oh, yeah. the Absolutely. energy in this building. They've been waiting. And you see the run right now, a 12-3 run. Well, they got to make hey San Diego State with Kate out of the game. Flynn. This is Mitchell. That's an offensive foul. Mitchell didn't think he could. But Bean drew the contact. I don't know. That could have been a flop, too. That's a hard call for an official. That's a hard call. You can't review a flop no. like that. Merrill, three. No, he's been short on just about everything. Everything. Well, you know what? He's doing a lot off the dribble. He's not getting a lot of catch and shoot. A lot of this stuff is coming off the dribble. Those are tough threes. He's one of eight from distance. Fagan kicks. Mitchell! No. Yeah, oh, that was it. it. What a great kick by Fagan. And Matt Mitchell is playing at a different level. Every time Utah State makes a run, San Diego State has an answer. They're going to have to get Kata back in because they're really a different team with him not in the game. Merrill doubles. Brock Miller. Brock Miller can't even get a shot. He's just one of three is Miller. Tonight, shot clock's down. Brito clears. It's a three. Dorius has the rebound. But you know, possession. look how San Diego State recovered. Offensive rebound, usually you get an open three, not against these guys. Merrill driving in trouble. Threw up a shot, no whistle. Craig Smith upset. And Merrill's having to guard Malachi Flynn on the other end as well. That expends a lot of energy. Mitchell took a look at the shot clock, goes to work, and hits oh, another one, an 18-footer this time. This guy. He's terrific. 17 for Mitchell. 7 of 11 shooting. And the lead's back at 12. Brito. And Narain gets the foul. He, he lost 25 pounds in the offseason. Well, you take a look. Great pass for Fagan. And you know what? Justin Bean, too much help. You can't give that kind of help on a guy who's been doing what he's doing. And then he gives it another one off the dribble this time. Boy, this guy's been really good. Diogo Brito. Like Keita from Portugal, though Brito 
was a little more accomplished in the junior program coming through Portugal. Keita was a soccer player, played other sports. It's a big soccer player. Yes. Brito's kind of the, uh, a glue guy off the bench. Free throw through. Keita lost it. They've hurt themselves at the free throw line, a team that normally shoots really good, 10 for 18 from the free throw line. It's one of the better teams in the country at 77%. Wetzel, you know what? They have to be thrilled with the minutes they're getting out of Wetzel. Tonight. Yeah, and you know that time, instead of posting up, he took him off the dribble where he's got to make him move a little bit more. Back to 13, Merrill. Boy, they're making life very hard for Merrill. Malachi Flynn, who's got three fouls. Merrill gets through and scores. Boy, he looks like he's had a long night. He's had to work for every catch. Forget about shot. And he's having to defend Flynn. Yeah, he's had a... Dribble handoff. And Flynn, oh, Wetzel with the catch. A foul. And it looks like Porter is down. Sixth team foul. And it's good to see him up. They go with the dribble handoff and then a slip to the basket by Wetzel. I like Wetzel better in moving situations rather than posting up situations. I think he likes it better too. Yeah. Like I said, the guy guarding him has something to do with it. The one thing you don't want to do with a guy like Kata is stand on one place. Because if he stands in one place, you're not scoring. Oh, that was a big rebound. Wetzel has the tap back. And San Diego State has been living at the end of the shot clock all night. That's how they play. They make you, they make every possession, I'm telling you, life and death. They guard the heck out of you, and then they take their time on offense. Flynn misses. And a rebound finally for Utah State. I don't think we expected him to get close to 30 minutes in this game. And he's fouled by Wetzel. Yanni Wetzel, third personal. Of course, not only Nathan Mensa, but Aguak Arope is also out. And that's a 6'6 a six, six muscle guy for San Diego State. Mensa is usually the starting big. I mean, you think about the depth that they're showing with two guys that usually play a lot out. Coming up next, busy day in college basketball, and we've got it covered for you on Inside College Basketball and CBS Sports Network. Brent Stover, Seth Davis, Ryan Hollins, John Rothstein. What a great group. What a wild weekend so far. Some top 10 teams taking losses. And you've got a number 13 team here in a really tough road environment up right now. Well, they got the small team in that I like with four three-point shooters surrounding Kata. So it's now or never time, but they still got time to do it. But they need to stop here. Flynn gets out of the double. Fagan. Wetzel. Nope. Kata, his fourth block. You saw that coming. Kata calling for it on Wetzel. He's bumped. That's a foul. And that's a timeout. Utah State down nine with four minutes left.
13, San Diego State has had a 16-point lead. Utah State's made a couple runs. It feels like they're in the middle of another one, and they're down nine. Rich Waltz along with Steve Lapis. A.J. Ross is here. Utah State, 13 and three. They beat LSU, they beat Florida. And of course, San Diego State has pounded some really good opponents. They beat Utah by 28, Creighton by 31, Iowa by 10. Mish Keita, if you're just joining us, has played 26 minutes, 13 and 13. One and one. Aggies 13 of 21 from the stripe. And here comes the pressure full court. One thing about San Diego State that helps, they have two point guards. K.J. Fagan and Malachi Flynn are both point guards. Fagan drops it off. You need to get this out. Yanni Wetzel on Keita. Oh. He scores over him. Good move. Boy, Wetzel, 10 points, five rebounds in 29 minutes. And I know Kate has got a double-double, but still. Merrill stumbling. Oh, they got away with one there. Lays it up and in. And then Flynn's fouled by Merrill. Fouls on Sam Merrill. It's for you know, all in all, Merrill has put some numbers up. He didn't, obviously hasn't been really efficient, but that was a good, strong play. Yanni Wetzel, remember Nathan Mintz is out. Wetzel having to play the five against a great five in Keita. Sam Merrill is 6 of 16, 1 of 8 from distance, 18 points. But not really a flowing 18. No, a tough one. He's usually better from distance. Yeah, that's the thing. He's one of the better ones in the West, 42%, and 1 of 8 is not bad. But remember, the Aggies have come back before. They had that great comeback to beat LSU. They were down 19 in that one. They were down 16 in this one. Kata simply loses the ball. That was a bad turnover. I mean, he's got to be gassed. He has to be. I mean, even the way, one of the reasons why Wetzel scored on that last play, he was standing upright. His knees weren't bent, and that's usually what happens when you're tired. He hasn't played in two weeks nursing that knee injury. He's played 27 minutes. And of course, he injured the knee a little more severely than December, all the way back last summer. Mitchell. Big night for Matt Mitchell, who's a great free throw shooter at 82%. Didn't bother Mitchell, no. Under three minutes left. And down 11 against a great defensive team. San Diego State. Merrill, Fagan not giving him any room. Gets the shot off and hits it. Tough shot. That was pretty good defense too, but you know, Fagan's a lot smaller than Merrill. So Merrill. Boy, could they use a good dose of Sam Merrill in the last two and a half minutes. Well, they need to stop right now.
Franklin gets the screen, rises up, and drops it in. I mean, that was over Kata. That was a, one heck of a move. 20 for Malachi Flynn. He is so under control, Rich. I mean, it's unbelievable. Porter's missed Flynn the rebound. He never does anything where he's like, looks like he's out of sync or he's just really under control. Now they're going to run this down into the shot clock. I probably wouldn't foul yet, but I would foul after this possession for sure. Try to get one stop and see if you can score quickly. Flynn, shackle, dagger. Oh, oh goodness. Wow. San Diego State has hit the big shots when they've needed them. The lead is stretched to 13. Miller off a screen. Rolls out. And it's headed to San Diego State. Boy, they've been so impressive. I mean, you watch this move by Malachi Flynn. I mean, he's doing this on Kata. Comes off the screen. Wow. And then off the kick from Malachi Flynn. How about Shackle? Three of four from three. 11 points. And they're going to take a, a look to see where that ball went before it went out. I thought they had it right. I thought it was off Utah State. Well, what have we learned so far tonight? I mean, San Diego State is down two, one starting big and another key guy off the bench. We, we learned that they are really good, San Diego State, really good. They're connected, they play together well. They are a better offensive team than a lot of teams. Steve Fisher had some unbelievable defensive teams, but this team has some balance in their scoring that, that San Diego State doesn't usually have. And they don't they shoot the ball much better from three than they usually have in the past. Matt Mitchell and Malachi Flynn and Shackle, those guys are really good three-point shooters. And Utah State, bottom line, they need Kata healthy and in condition to play the way he can play. That is huge for them because he is the difference maker on their team. And I'm, I'm, I, you're completely accurate. And Kata has 15 and 13. I mean, that's how good he is. That's how good he is. But, but he's been out of gas. He's been yeah. low. The tank's been low in the second half. And I think even defensively, the last couple of plays, in the he was in the lane on Wetzel. He didn't do anything. That one on Malachi Flynn. You know, I'm not saying that wasn't a good move. It was a good move, but he wasn't really active and engaged in that possession to do what he could do. I think that'll happen when he gets in better shape because he is a tremendous player. Now, these two teams will meet again in San Diego on February 1st. Flynn, Shackle. But this team plays very well together. Turnover. And this is B with a dunk. 11 point game, one minute left in Logan. Seventy-four, sixty-three. Number thirteen, San Diego State, on top of Utah State. I told you that Utah State's almost impossible to beat here, and they've won fifteen straight at home. These are other teams that have great home court advantages. Santa Clara is a team that's sneaking up on a lot of people. Right yeah, now. Herb Sendik's doing a really good job this year. That team is playing great right now. I think you got to foul if you're going to give this thing a shot. You got to foul. Flynn gets by Bean, fires it ahead to Shackle. He's doubled. And a held ball, and the arrow goes to Utah State. You know, obviously Shackle's made two really bad plays here. They got to try and keep the ball in the hands of Flynn and Mitchell and Fagan. Now, Brian Dutcher is irate. He's walking with the officials all the way to the center of the table. Obviously, got to be careful that he does not pick up a technical foul no, here. No, you're up 11. With 48 seconds left. Whatever you're mad at, you're in good shape. Now Porter rushes it up the floor. Merrill. Great closeout by Flynn. Gets it loose. Boy, that went down in and then came back up and out. Fagan's fouled, 34 seconds left. San Diego State's wins. We told you about Utah, Iowa, Creighton, 
They beat BYU on the road. All four of those teams are top 50 in the NET rankings. They've been tremendous on the road. Obviously, that's what really proves how good a team that you are. And here they are, their upcoming schedule. Nevada a winner today in the Mountain West. And Merrill wow. shot blocks. What a block. I tell you, KJ Fagan averaged 17 and a half points a game in Santa Clara. And this kid here is only averaging seven and a half points a game, and he plays so hard. And that was one of the things Brian Dutcher told us. Is these guys, they want to win. They don't care about the points. They did that. They want to win. And guess what? They look like they want to win. Miller missed the three. Merrill is fouled on the rebound. And Fagan's been chasing Merrill all over the place tonight. He's Mitchell's quick, and he's relentless. Mitchell's fourth. I mean, K.J. Fagan was a first-team All-West Coast Conference player. And he's really given himself up to be in a situation where he's going to win. And right now, he's winning about, he's winning more than anybody else in the country. <laughs> Except Auburn. That's true. Now, Merrill, if he hits his free throw, will have 23 points on the night. You wouldn't show. You wouldn't guess. I don't. Put this if you asked me and I didn't know, you say how many did Merrill have tonight? I'd say I had 12. <laughs> 23. 23. 10 point game, 21 seconds left. It was tips. You got to be careful. You don't want to throw it in there in the deep corner. Got to get some spacing. Tony Padilla will look at it. Along with Michael Irving. It's tough to tell. Tough to tell. Ah, boy, I don't know. That, that might go Utah State's way. That's a tough one. The original call was San Diego State's ball. I don't know if there's enough there to overturn this. You know, it's funny, we, we, now we can go obviously in the last two minutes to the, to the replay, and it's still hard. Imagine all these years, referees were guessing a lot in these situations, because how, how could you know? We watch a tape, but we don't know. It's an impossibly difficult job to officiate a college basketball. It is. I think officiating in general, when you know, every, it's bang, bang, you know, you, you can't have every angle. You can't see everything. It's it's hard. I mean, this is a classic example. I don't know who that's off, and we're watched it four times. And and part of the the difficulty of the job is the officials are the officials are judged in slow motion, but they don't get slow motion when they make no. that call. And they're running up and down the floor all, all night. They gave that one to Utah State. Yeah. So Utah State does get it they still are down 10 with 19 seconds left well you know san diego state not really reacting that good in the last two minutes of this game merrill a three got it line drive so merrill it's a seven point game now 14 seconds left well obviously they're going to set up their pressure, try and force the ball into the corner, try and get a steal. If you don't get a steal right away with this much time left and down seven, you got to foul immediately. And you can't figure, you can't, you have no choice on who you foul. Whoever's got the ball, it's Malachi Flynn, you got to foul him. You just got to do it. But try and get a five second count, try and put him in a tough spot in the corner.
And now if you're San Diego State, you don't want to throw the ball into the deep corner if you can help it. And you want to get the ball into Fagan or Malachi Flynn, the guys who are better with the ball. And better free throw shooters. Yes. Fagan, 88%. Mitchell, 82%. Jordan Shackle, 85%. Flynn is at 75%. And as you pointed out, for San Diego State, the impressive part is they're doing this without Nathan Mensa, 7.7 rebound. Big, who starts and is a shot blocker, a rim protector in the great tradition of rim protectors at San Diego State. But I'll be honest with you, Rich, I think they're harder to guard when they're small. When Matt Mitchell's the four man, and you got Fagan out there, and you got Malachi Flynn out there, and you got Shackle out there, they're hard to guard. I think Mitchell being able to, he's three of four from distance tonight. That adds a different element. And he's being guarded by four men. And that's a lot harder, that's a lot better for him. Long toss. That was that's, a good play. That's Flynn, escapes the foul. Porter gets him. That was a good play by San Diego State to throw over the top instead of throwing it into the deep corner like they had been. Malachi Flynn, Bellarmine Prep in Tacoma, Washington, and then at Washington State. A red shirt year last year, and boy, has he been something for San Diego State. Final seconds. And number 13, San Diego State has weathered the storm. Great win on the road for San Diego State. Really, really impressive in this game on both ends of the floor. And the Aztecs are still unbeaten. Auburn and San Diego State, the only college basketball unbeatens here in the first week of January. And that's really impressive because of all the new pieces when you talk about Flynn and Fagan and, and uh, Wetzel and I mean to come together this quickly and to be 15 and 0, one of two undefeated teams in the country is really an impressive accomplishment. Utah State will get better the more that uh, Keita is on the floor. San Diego State hopeful to get Nathan Mensa and Aguaco Rope back. Sell out crowds. And the Aztecs pretty much kept them out of this game. Matt Mitchell's with our A.J. Ross. A.J.? That's right, Matt Mitchell, 19 points, three for four beyond the arc. You faced a very great defensive team under pressure, but you were just in a zone tonight. Um, I give all credit to my teammates. They, they made the plays to find me open, and I got down here when I felt I could and tried to make plays for my teammates as well and for myself. And so I, I was implemented in the starting lineup, so I knew I, need, I had to be aggressive, so that's what I came out and tried to do. Talk about the other efforts of, you mentioned your teammates stepping up big on both sides of the floor, and also this is a team that beat you guys in the Mountain West Championship game last year. It's a very, very good team, very capable team of winning all their games and winning the championship, and it was very tough for us to come in here, and the coaches put, put together a game plan, and I, I give credit to, to Yanni on the defensive end. Um, he had to guard Kato one-on-one, -on -one and that's, that's a huge task. Um, he did a great job. Jordan hit, Jordan hit a big shot down the line. Malachi hit big shots, and he made free throws. So I mean, we came in here, and we were aggressive, and we were the aggressors, and we came out with the win. And now you're 15 and 0, still one of only two teams left in the country that are undefeated. And your coach mentioned that you guys are still learning how to play with each other. What does that say about the potential of this team? Uh, I, sky is the limit. That's all I can say. Uh, I, I mean, we're 15 and 0 right now. Uh, I feel like our chemistry isn't, isn't 100%, but I feel like we'll be there by the end of the season. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you, AJ. They've reached the sky. They're looking at the stratosphere now at 15 and 0. San Diego State a winner tonight. For Steve Lapis, AJ Ross, our entire CBS crew, I'm Rich Waltz. This is a presentation of CBS Sports Network, 24 hour home of CBS Sports. Let's send it to New York, Brent, Seth, Ryan, and John.